Hi, I'm Allegra Tepper, and today we're going to be talking about the future of movies. I don't know about you, but there's few things I miss as much as going to the movie theaters. I love getting in those big comfy chairs, maybe they even recline, staring at that big screen with my popcorn, my candy, my soda, I get it all. It's an amazing communal experience that I'm really craving right now. The big movie theater company stocks are down 50% and movie theaters already faced industry headwinds before the pandemic. Let's break it down. Big picture, the number of tickets sold has been in decline since around 2002, when moviegoers bought about 1.6 billion tickets in North America. In 2019, 1.2 billion tickets were sold. So the decline over the last decade is noticeable, but not severe. But even while ticket sales have declined, total box office, AKA revenue, for movie theaters has continually increased to a record $12 billion in 2018. Thank you, Black Panther. So how does box office increase while tickets sold goes down? The price of tickets have increased. In 2002, you could go see Spider-Man for $5.81. Now, if you wanna go see Bad Boys for Life, it's gonna cost you $9.16 on average. And that's before your family wants popcorn, candy, and soda, which, as I mentioned, are pretty essential to the experience. Even if the box office remains stable, some worry about the financial health of movie theater companies anyway. Many of them, including AMC, borrowed tons of debt to finance things like huge reclining seats. According to Variety, investors were already concerned theater companies might fail to repay debts and go bankrupt. And that was before COVID. You can watch unlimited Netflix for $9 a month, Disney Plus for $7, Hulu for six, all from the comfort of your own couch, whenever you want, pants optional. At what price will it not make sense to go to the movies when a movie costs $10? $15? Historically, movie theaters and movie studios have negotiated something called a theatrical window. This is when theaters have the exclusive right to play a film for typically 90 days before the studio can send that movie anywhere else. So it's 90 days in the movie theaters and then they can go to premium video on demand or to a streaming service that you pay for with a subscription. The thing is, 90 days in 2020 is an enormous period of time. Studios really want to have greater leverage in their negotiations with the movie theaters. They want to use the theater as a sort of momentum building exhibition that gets people excited to watch it on their couch. What happens to movie theaters if movie studios just send their movies straight to video on demand, right to your living room? That's exactly what they've been experimenting with during COVID. The most bullish of all of the studios right now is Universal. They sent Emma, The Hunt, and The Invisible Man straight to VOD, all for the cost of $19.99. And people were going for it. They are hungry for content right now. And no movie showed this more than Trolls World Tour, which they also released direct to consumers. In the first three weeks, Trolls World Tour made $100 million. We're used to seeing movies on Amazon or on iTunes for $5.99, $4.99 rentals. We're not used to seeing a $19.99 rental. And sure, if you think about the fact that you're quarantined with your family, you might have four or five people gathered around to watch that movie, that spreads out across the family in a way that seems pretty affordable. But when we see that dollar amount, it can be a bit jarring. And if you think about a movie like Trolls, which was released to these captive families. You have these parents sitting at home dying for some new content to show their kids. They don't mind that they're gonna have to listen to those troll songs over and over again as long as their kids are occupied while they're quarantined. That movie made a hundred million dollars. So when you don't have as captive an audience, when this stops being something that's novel and exciting and we are kind of desperate for content, what's the willingness to pay gonna be? And our studio is gonna be able to take $200 million for a movie just from people watching it at home? I'm not so sure. The movie theater is gonna become where we go to see a certain type of film. And another type of film is going to be mainly watched at home. In 2018, over a third of box office revenue came from just 10 films. And most of those were, as you can probably imagine, superhero films, animated films, 
That's the type of stuff that's gonna have to stay in movie theaters. But for movies like The Lovebirds, for smaller or mid-range budget films, it might just make sense to send things direct to the home. Movie theaters need to adapt. And what that's gonna look like, I'm as curious as you are.